Good morning, this is Ashish Kalra. I run a family office in India. Basically, I have a bachelor's degree in electrical engineering uh, from the University of Texas at Austin, a master's degree in operations research from Cornell, master's degree in industrial engineering from Cornell, MBA from the Chicago Booth School of Business, all uh, rated respectively number one in their respective fields, and basically worked uh, on in the financial markets for the last 22 years. Uh, basically, from my last video, I've talked about the evolution of animal viruses. And I will just sort of recapture some of that and then go into uh, some other points. Point number one is basically uh, killing of cattle uh, for human consumption uh, that has led to the Kretzerfeld uh, Jacob disease, uh, killing of humans. It leads to dementia and death. Now, what is interesting is there's a very recent study by my alma mater. Uh, the Chicago Boot School of Business and Columbia University uh, two months ago where they've talked about uh, meat packing plants contributing up to 8% of COVID-19 cases and that leading to around 5,000 deaths uh, up to July uh, 20th. Um, just to spend a minute on uh, pigs, uh, the consumption of pigs uh, has uh, uh, led to various viruses, one of them being the Nipah virus, uh, which happened in Malaysia in 1999, and then also happened in 2017 in southern India in the state of Kerala. Uh, basically, it's a bat-infected uh, disease which has gone to pigs, and then pigs have been consumed by humans, and this has killed uh, uh, humans. Now, there's also some very interesting research uh, by John Cohen in Science, uh, talking about a swine flu strain uh, that has human uh, pandemic potential that has been found uh, recently pigs in China. This comes in uh, Science in June 20, the 29, 2020 issue. And th this also has uh, sort of takeaways for the swine flu influenza and for the swine flu pandemic that happened in 2009 that killed nearly uh, 300,000 human beings uh, around the world. So basically I've talked, you know, I've talked about the various animal viruses, uh, consumption of cattle, consumption of chicken leading to the H5N1 virus, uh, pigs leading to the swine flu influenza, uh, the Nipah virus, and then also in marine animals where you have consumption of whales, it leads to global warming, uh, consumption of sharks, uh, basically it damages the oceanic uh, subsystem. And then I'll basically go into uh, some of the other viruses like SARS, uh, uh, MERS, and then uh, uh, the current pandemic. Uh, so basically I just want to spend a minute on uh, bat viruses. So this is a very important part which basically leads to, uh, you know, has led to the Marburg virus in uh, 1967 and then um, the Hendra virus in 1994 in Brisbane, Australia, and then in 1976 and 2014, the Ebola virus in parts of Western Africa, where they've actually been killing bats uh, for human consumption. So these zoonotic diseases happen because human beings are getting closer to, uh, uh, to animals, as well as eating these animals. And then I've talked about the Nipah virus and pigs. And then the bat virus also finds its way in 2003 uh, to Chivets. Uh, consumption of that caused the SARS virus in 2003, 2004. And then in 2020, which leads to the current virus. So basically, I've just uh, you know, gone over the various animals and the various viruses it causes. Um, and... Um, you know, and then the other point what I want to make here is that if you look at this um, uh, section over here, the intensity of the viruses uh, is increasing. So basically, uh, there's SARS, there's swine flu pandemic, uh, MERS, and then the current uh, epidemic. So basically, one of the things I try to argue is that animals have inbuilt mechanisms to prevent themselves uh, from human consumption. Now, just for a minute, to spend on SARS, basically, if you look at a lot of research from great research by Robert Roos in the Center for Infectious Disease, uh, basically talking about 
the role of civets in SARS, and there's various research on that, and genetic tests have suggested a link between, uh, between uh, civets and the SARS virus in a 32-year-old producer in Guangdong. Now, essentially what happened then, subsequently, the Chinese government ordered the killing of close to 12,000 to 14,000 civets in February 2004. Now, basically, just to sort of case study what happens here, uh, there's a doctor, uh, Liu Jinlun, who's basically treating uh, patients in, uh, uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, one of his patients is a nurse. Uh, she spreads it to someone in Singapore. And then the hotel they're staying at, uh, that virus spreads uh, to people who boarded planes to Singapore, Vietnam, the US, Ireland, and Canada. Now, basically, the SARS virus spreads from five countries to 32 countries in a very, very short time. And this is basically uh, from uh, a book called The Pandemic by uh, Sonia Shah Harper Collins, 2020. And essentially, this is a forerunner of what has happened with the current pandemic. Now, in SARS, you've had uh, consumption of shivets, which have uh, led to it. And in uh, 2020, you've had uh, consumption uh, of pangolin infected by bats uh, again. Secondly is the MERS virus. This happened in 2012, 2014. Um, and basically, this was closeness as well as consumption of camel meat. And it has happened in various parts of the Middle East, uh, in Yemen, in Jordan, in Egypt, in Syria, uh, but 75% of the cases uh, were in Saudi Arabia. And uh, essentially, uh, the big difference between MERS and uh, the current pandemic was that MERS was localized. Uh, in the case of the current pandemic, uh, there were seven to eight regular flights from Wuhan to the US, regular seven to eight flights from Wuhan to Iran, seven to eight regular flights from Wuhan uh, to Europe. And in many ways, uh, MERS also uh, is a precursor uh, to what has happened with the current pandemic. So um, basically, this is an important slide where I just basically talk about the mega viruses, uh, which is basically uh, 2003, 2004, uh, there's SARS, consumption of civets, uh, spreads to 32 countries. In 2009, there's the swine flu pandemic because of consumption of pigs. It spreads to 213 countries. Over 300,000 human beings are killed. And then you have, in 2012, 2014, you have the MERS virus because of consumption of camels. Spreads to 27 countries. And then 2020, you have the coronavirus because of consumption of pangolin. So basically, my argument is that all these viruses and pandemics are happening because of proximity and consumption of animals. And therefore, the animal food chain has to be disrupted permanently. And what I basically propose is that it happens in three phases. In phase one, basically wild animals, uh, you stop eating wild animals, which is flying foxes, bears, leopards, uh, chivets, pangolin, chimpanzees, wild boar, Many of these are eaten in China. And then what I've shown in the blocks here is the uh, viruses or pandemics that have happened as a result of consumption of these particular animals. And then phase two is quasi-wild wild animals, bats, camels, frogs, baby deer, uh, turtles, pigeons. And then lastly, domestic animals, uh, which is phase three, which is cattle, uh, chicken, pigs. So my, my point here is that ecosystem B, which is human beings, cannot kill and feed on ecosystem A, which is animals, and also ecosystem C, which is cannibals, cannot feed on ecosystem B, which is human beings. They get brain disease. So these are sort of natural reactions uh, to prevent the action from happening. So the net net is, uh, the other large point here is, that man is designed to be vegetarian. So actually, if you look at various, um, uh, if you look at the teeth, uh, basically carnivores have 
you know, canine teeth uh, to help them tear flesh. Man does not. Uh, if you look at the way they drink water, uh, carnivores gulp water. Uh, herbivores and man, they drink water with their lips and their mouth. Uh, the levels of hydrochloric acid are much higher in carnivores because to uh, digest the meat in man and herbivores, that is far less. Uh, the kidneys in carnivores uh, are much larger because they are designed to flesh out uh, poisonous meat. In uh, man and herbivores, uh, kidneys are smaller and the, the intestines also are 10 to 12x in man and herbivores, unlike that in carnivores. And then lastly, I just want to talk about uh, the design of life. If you look at rats, rats go from 2 to 1250 at the end of the year. There's a reason they multiply exponentially, because there are various animal species which are uh, feeding on them. Uh, there's uh, different kinds of snakes, uh, hissing cobras, green cobras, pythons, rattlesnakes. Uh, there's different kinds of birds, there's owls, there's falcons, there's vultures, there's eagles uh, feeding on them. And to maintain that ecosystem, rats multiply in this fashion. The same thing uh, with deer. And the same thing also with cheetah. Cheetah have much higher, larger lungs because they principally hunt gazelles, which run as fast. But cheetahs in their final dash have larger lungs to withhold large, larger amounts of oxygen that can help them kill uh, uh, cheetahs. Point number four is I talk about Superman and Christopher Reeves in a wheelchair. Because what you're trying to do is basically do things uh, that are uh, that cannot be done by man and there's a reaction. Uh, the same thing with biology of first cousin marriages. There's a very interesting research by D. Bala Subramaniam where basically uh, communities that marry uh, within themselves, their children have a much higher rate of abnormalities. And lastly, you can't kill and eat animals. Nature strikes back and that's the current situation we're in. Thank you.